Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be going over a starter guide for Barker. This starter guide is mainly going to be geared towards using him on a defense team and not an attack team. I think on an attack team he's a lot more straightforward. Just pile up the attack as much as you can. You're going to be utilizing his rush to do damage whereas on a defense team you want to do the pretty much the opposite. You want to keep him alive as much as possible use his rush for revives, and then if his teammates are taken down, that's where he's going to do the damage. That's how it's going to work on a defense team. Now, I did go over his abilities, his rush, his active skill, his specialist skill, and his weapon options, or at least the weapon that you can get from the season store in my preview video. If you want to go check that out, you should see it in the top right-hand corner. We're not going to go through that so much in this video, but obviously Barker is the League Season 13 S-Class character. You can pick him up in the Season Store just in Season 13. Characters very rarely ever come back. Like we've only ever seen Tara come back on a promo wheel once or twice. And I think that was probably a mistake. And we have seen the five-star version of Sean come back in this battle pass. Pretty much that's it. Pretty much that's it. I can't really recall any other characters. Maybe Alert Sandy came back once or twice. I'm not sure. And again, in the promo world, just randomly as a secondary character, very, very rarely happens. Now, when it comes to Barker's skills on a defense team, you still want to max out his rush. Obviously, you would want to max out his rush on an attack team. But if you do want to use him on defense, you're going to need to really identify how high you want to raise that active skill once you obviously raise it where the initial cooldown reduces you can see it starts to reduce right here level three or level four should i say that's when it's going to become a problem you could say getting it to six is okay you're going to be fine there initial cooldown of four that means the power of it is actually pretty good and the only thing that changes after that is the initial cooldown the reason you maybe don't want the initial cooldown to go down to two is he doesn't gain any ap off of this and while in, there will be situations where it's very useful to be able to cleanse all penalties on yourself for instance infection heal reduction all these good things it isn't always useful him rushing is going to be more important a lot of the time and that's the that's the sort of issue you're going to have to calculate for a defense team you don't control it so it's going to happen randomly on an attack team you can just max this out if you're going to utilize him mainly on attack teams because you can do this whenever you want if you're on a defense team i'd say getting it to getting it here is you're safe you're safe to get here because the initial cooldown does not change i think if you get it to let me see. If you get it to here, it only goes to initial cooldown of four, but the, the HP is for two turns rather than one. So I'd say the different grades are going to be not upgrade it at all, three, six, and eight. Those are the only ones you should really go for. So, so one, three, six, eight. If you if you don't want to get any sort of increase in initial cooldown, three's okay. If you don't mind the initial cooldown going a little bit higher, but obviously being able to get a two turn heal, six. And if you want him to just pop this all the time on a defense team, two. You might want to test him out at one first just to see how he runs. And obviously, the, the issue here is when you upgrade it to three and test him out, you can't bring it back down to one. So, yeah, this is always the issue. But definitely max out that rush. Very, very powerful rush. Now, when it comes to his mods, what we're going to do is we're going to absolutely just blitz his HP up as high as possible. And you're going to understand why near the end of the, the build. But we're going to go for HP set. That means we're going to go for HP on HP. We've got to get that HP up as high as possible because this is the only source of HP we're giving him. The only other source that he could get is leader skills. But we're going to be giving him defense on his weapon. And again, I'll, under I'll, I'll let you know why when we get onto the weapon section. So we just pick up a good mod. We've got a 575 here. I'll happily take that. Now, defense against strong is ideal. But if you think he's going to be attacked by certain different teams, that could be the way to go. But we're going to go with defense versus strong. We're going to try, just try and pick up, obviously, your highest percentage. Not very high in this situation. Now, in the bottom right-hand corner, he's going to be coming up against teams that have got Brutus in them. So you want to maybe go with Confuse Resist because you don't want him to get confused. I have got some Confuse Resist here. So I'd say those are the pretty much the set standard of how you'd want to build the basic Barker on a defense team. 
The next two mods is pretty much down to you. In the bottom left hand corner, the auxiliary mod, if you have made it so that he's not going to be doing his active too often, that means he's going to be getting basic attacks off quite a lot. He's going to be doing basic attack, basic attack rush, or basic attack, basic attack command that turn. So in the first two turns, he should do two basic attacks. He is pretty quick though, 66 AP. So he could potentially be commanded turn one if you have the right AP weapons on a team. If he's got 20% AP to self. I don't think it's too beneficial because he hasn't got any controlling factors on his rush. So I'd say it's not very beneficial for Barker. But in the meantime, you could either do Reflect and get a decent Reflect number on him. I would Obviously, if you have someone like Alpha coming up against his character, Reflect will work with her rush. Very frustrating with Alpha to have Reflect on characters. Also, like I said, AP Drain can be quite useful too. However, Reflect, the chance of hitting a Reflect is extremely high. As you can see, a better chance to Reflect damage to the enemy Whereas AP Drain is a minor chance, so you've got much more chance of Reflect actually happening versus AP Drain. Now the last mod here is pretty much up to you. What you think is a problem for you in your region, it can be dependent on your region. Your region could have lots of certain characters. For instance, it could have lots of Mr. Luz, and that way you'd want to actually have Bleed Resist in here. You could potentially go for something else like Trauma Resist because you think a lot of characters are going to start having trauma now. You've got the, the Skull Axe that has got trauma and you've got a couple of characters that have been released with trauma weapons. So you could potentially say, hey, actually it's a pretty good idea to go for trauma so that if I do resist, that confuse or if I do have other characters cleanse Barker he's not going to likely take massive amounts of trauma damage this resist is pretty much up to you if you want to play it safe you'd want to go for something like stun resist is actually pretty good because you're going to be coming up against strong characters on attack teams so that is what we're going to go with we're going to go with HP stun resist and that's going to give us a chance to resist those healing stuns that are going to come in from those strong characters we're going to lock this in and you can see we've got the 670 bonus HP. The more platinum mods that you have within the, the HP set, the better. If you can get a HP platinum mod, even if it's offset, it's generally better to go with that than a, a HP set mod until you get a HP on, on HP mode. And the reason HP set is great is the next part, is the weapon part. Well, this is the only place he's getting the HP and you can see he hasn't gone up that high. He's only got another, let's have a little look, he's only got another 1,300 over his max amount of HP stat. He's going to rely on a leader bonus from the likes of Aaron or any other you know, HP leader like Jackie. And, and they will get a lot of HP from those characters. Now, the reason we're going to go with that is because when it comes to his weapon, this is where he's going to utilize either attack on attack teams or defense on defense teams. And the reason you do this is because of his specialist skill because it will multiply with the weapon percentage and it will actually scale higher if he has defense percentage on the weapon or an attack percentage. If characters on his team have been taken out, his defense will massively rise compared to if he didn't have a defensive percentage weapon. If he went with a HP percentage weapon while his HP would rise, as his teammates are taken out, his defense would only increase based purely off of the specialist skill not over the multiplications from the leader skill the weapon and the specialist skill and that's where it can go nuts he'll have such high defense in those those situations now you can't see the pure number when you long press a character to see their defensive stats but i would say it's definitely better to go for attack percentage on an attack team and defense percentage on a defense team and this sort of weapon would be the most perfect weapon pretty much that you could put on Barker. You're getting that 45% defense that's going to multiply with that special skill like I just talked about. The huge AP means he's going to be getting his rush fast enough to do a natural turn 3 rush or a command turn 2. You'd probably hope for someone else to be commanded honestly. Impenetrable defense means it's going to be obviously blocking AP gain from some characters and it's not going to be taking any damage. The only character that can bypass that is going to be Alpha and that's going to be a, a big issue obviously for, for Barker and teams that are going to face him. And fast healing in that four slot is obviously the hardest part to come by if you can't get fast healing you could potentially go with 1535 if you want to make a bit more of an aggressive defense team if you've got like arav in that team these two characters could be in a line together or you could put hp percentage here instead or ap on defense 
you don't necessarily have to go for that proper premium one in the four slot they are very very hard to come by i know that from my own experience but this weapon would be the best you could come up with however if you did want to go for the hp option this would pretty much be it it would be beta's robust crowbar as the base because that has a hp percentage i'd say this isn't the best way to go but if you've already crafted a weapon like this already it's fine to put in his hands for the time being you just want to make his mods defensive he's not going to get as good boosts from the specialist skill if teammates are taken out but this is definitely not a terrible weapon for him now when we put the weapon in his hands we can see that he gets 5400 defense and 5306 hp now this is without a leader bonus and obviously that defense is going to boost even higher when his teammates are taken out if we do put in a leader we can see that his defense gets boosted up to 7560 and hp is up to 6930 Aaron is giving that 40% boost. If you did have Jackie, his HP would be boosted, but his defense would not be. And this is potentially where some issues could come in, but it is kind of hard to balance his stats, honestly. He doesn't have the best defensive balance because he has got quite a lot of attack. You see, there's no green number on that attack. That is his maxed out base stat, 4,700. When you compare it to like Georgia, or trader who at the completely other end of the scale where they've got like 1300 to 1500 attack their defense and hp can go over 10,000 pretty easily it's going to be much harder for barker here to get those sort of stat numbers okay so we're going to attack this team and you can see that i've got three effectively fodder characters just to show you how it's going to work basically the idea is as teammates are taken out and barker's defense gets increased he'll take a lot less damage because of this even though he's getting attacked by a, a strong character right now you'll see that he'll take a lot less um damage because he's got a 93 percent defense boost and that's because one of these characters did have a 10 percent weapon on them as well and he's got a lot of base stats you're going to see reasonably well okay he's going to see really we'll, we'll just see what you can get with a command i mean that's still pretty high but you're going to be honest a strong character like brutus brutus here with 17 and a half thousand attack the fast healing is going to heal that up straight away now this is where we're going to see someone's like um alpha's rush come into to play and we're going to see what basically alpha's going to do is take him out most likely but have the chance of being reflected because of it so we're going to have one hit come in reflect does come back two reflex come back she got pretty lucky with the 15 percent, but it took two hits to take out barker normally i'm one-shotting fast characters with my alpha just because her damage output is massive now the three fodder characters that we took out are going to be much better characters so it's going to be harder to take them out you're hoping for other revives like tanya and this is where the revive train can come in so now when we come up against this team we can see that there's a bit more like more dangerous targets barker while he is powerful people are going to most likely going to be looking at tanya and lee as being the scary characters here i've not got a daisy resist on lee but i can just easily get him with that no problem we didn't get another character i mean i guess we did get aaron he's not going to be able to do his impair that could be pretty you know annoying but we didn't get his revive we know he's a window we are going to disarm him as well we are going to be able to get in some attacks and this is where the issue what do i do now who do i control i've got to basically stop tanya who else does it hit it does actually hit um the rick but he's going to be um able to resist that as well and I'll, now i've got to kind of focus tanya and hope for the best that she actually gets taken out it's taken three hits to take out tanya and we've got to hope that we do basically some damage or some so we're actually going to give him his rush and this is where like even even with only one character taken out it's going to be really effective as you can see really effective a lot of damage here a lot of damage we can probably take him out but we have had tanya get picked up and and it's just it's just we're running into some issues for sure where tanya could get oh she's not gonna the active command's gonna come in so this is this is basically what barker's meant to be like just annoying he isn't doing huge amounts of damage but it's because not many characters are taken out but as more characters are taken out he's going to get buffed and this is going to be that situation where his teammates have been taken out 
people have ignored Barker because they've not really taken him seriously. That's the hope, or at least you've got more dangerous characters with Barker. At least people will assume more dangerous characters. And he's going to get his rush off against offensive teams. And the damage output should be good enough to, to have a big impact. You're going to see massive amounts of damage in two revives as well. And imagine one of those characters getting picked up is like Arav. Now that's going to be a guaranteed secondary takedown on one of these other characters. And that's where your team can effectively recover from the current situation they're in. So there are definitely some setups that Barker's going to shine in. But I think some of the biggest issues he's going to face is the stat balance. That's going to be always the biggest issue when it comes to a defense team character. His stat balance is much more on the offensive side. So you could see that his stats weren't getting up to the 10k mark. And that's something you've got to play, maybe play with. You might want to just go all out defense on his combat mods and his weapon and just get that defense really high and just hope for the best there that could potentially be a better way to go you're going to have to test out this is just my starter guide on how to make more of a balanced barker for a defense team if you are getting hp leader bonus you would only be losing out on about 1000 to 2000 hp versus gaining 2000 extra defense getting that defense up to 10,000, you are just going to be susceptible to defense down in that situation so there's there's always there's always downsides to overdoing it with hp infection for instance and there's also always downsides to doing overdoing it with defense with defense down so you've got to try and balance out the character as best you can but i do think barker has some viability on a defense team if you do plan to use him on attack all out attack on the mods his weapon from the season store is extremely good as well you're getting fast healing as a bonus the only downside is you're not going to get the attack boost that you normally get from a 1535 there but that is going to counter infection quite nicely and when he rushes if he does pick anyone up same sort of situation they're going to be blocking the infection there as well so definitely a multitude of options you've got for barker this was just a starter guide to just you know push you in the right direction i would say no matter what a defense percentage weapon on a defense team and an attack percentage weapon on an attack team will get the best out of him just with that specialist skill it's definitely something to try and take advantage of but that is the end of my video guys hopefully this has been helpful for some of you do tell me if you are actually going to pick up this character in the season store i do think he's one of the better characters we've had for quite a long time i think ivana was probably the last great character we had she's very useful but barker seems like he could have some potential do give me your thoughts on barker and your ideas of how you're going to gear him out for an attack or a defense team in the comments down below i do try and reply whenever i can but that is the end of my video guys i want to thank you very much for tuning in and as always always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving